So today what I wanted to do is just do a quick walkthrough of this Mercury outboard, give you a quick review, give you my opinion, and then we're gonna hit the water and do a quick little test run. Let's check it out. So this motor is a 2018 six horsepower Mercury, four stroke. This guy is 57 pounds dry, so very portable. It is a single cylinder. The downside with single cylinder, it's gonna be a little bit more noisy. If you step up to the eight horsepower, that is a two cylinder and you get a little bit better balancing with the two cylinder than you do with the single cylinder. Just like with almost every other outboard, this is water cooled. You've got your water impeller standard spot right here. Drop your lower end unit, you'll see the impeller right there. Comes with a three blade prop here, drain, fill, lower end unit oil. Under the tiller handle, there is the oil drain plug. Once again, this is four strokes, so you've got to have oil. It does not take a mix. Here is forward neutral reverse. Kill switch, your hookup for external tank. Tiller handle, basically have three positions. Start, restart, and then throttle. Here is gas control valve on off. Standard thrust rod. Usually with this motor, I've got a 12 foot boat. I am trim position number four from the bottom. Let's take the cowl off, we'll check it out. Beautiful looking inside. There's your spark plug, single cylinder. Here is oil fill, obviously gas, gas line coming from your cutoff. Also note on this, you want this closed if you're using external tank. Carb fuel filter, fuel pump. This is your safety linkage, so if you have it in forward or reverse, it prevents the pull start from engaging. Four, five, and six horsepower motors are the exact same motor, except the six horsepower has a slightly larger carburetor, so they're pushing out a few extra horsepower with the same exact engine. If you have a four and you wanna step it up, there are kits that cost a little under 200 bucks to get two extra horsepower. I've been stuck out on the water because I forgot something, one thing, something stupid. So I either didn't open the gas tank vent or I didn't open the gas valve or my kill switch lanyard wasn't engaged on the kill switch. Yeah, stupid, I know. One, two, three, right? One, two, three. If it won't start, if you're cold starting, tiller handle and start position. Here is choke control here, all the way out, full choke. Give it a few pulls. Once you hear it going and it's idling well, close that choke all the way. With this specific engine, I've never had to do half choke. It's always full choke, immediately kill it. So I've had this for about five months so far. And like I said, I have a love-hate relationship with this thing. So I just wanna give a, my opinion on reliability, value, and power. Reliability wise, I have never been out on the water and felt like I was gonna be stranded, never. I feel extremely confident on this. The one issue that I have is cold starting. For this specific motor, this specific one that I have, which was a used one, I have a very hard time cold starting this. I even take the data on how many pulls it takes me to, to start it. And so far this year, it's averaged right at five pulls to start it when it's cold. I know it's ridiculous actually taking data on starting how many pulls it takes to start, but I was really curious because I was getting so frustrated with it. But once it's warm, it's first pull every time, no issue. So my opinion, I think the guy before me ran ethanol fuel. So ethanol fuel just mess up your carburetor. There's a small idle port that's really responsible for starting and providing the correct fuel air ratio for cold starting. That thing probably has some contamination in it. I need to take that carb off and clean it and I think I'll get better performance from cold starting. But I will say, if you look up the reviews for this guy, the majority of bad reviews is starting issues. And I truly believe that it all has to do with this carb right here. They have to meet so many strict EPA regulations that the ports are so small and everything is so tight, any contamination will really mess up uh, the starting performance of this. So it's really important with this motor, and I would say with any small horsepower motor like this that have to meet EPA regulations, 
that you run non-ethanol gas, and if you have to run ethanol gas, put an ethanol gas treatment in it. And regardless of what fuel you use, use a fuel stabilizer. Now value, this will cost you about $1,800 new, plus tax, fees, you're gonna leave out the door two grand. I bought this used for a thousand. So two to three year old motors, six horsepower Mercury's, you can get for between a thousand, twelve hundred dollars. But the Tahatsus are the same exact motor and new, you can get a Tahatsu for around fifteen hundred to sixteen hundred. Dead set on getting a brand new one. Honestly, I would go Tahatsu and save three hundred bucks. Power. If you look at the reviews, the number two complaint is power. I had a four horsepower Yamaha two stroke on this boat before this motor. And I will say they are very similar in power output. But when you step up to the eight, that's where you're really gonna see the big difference because you've got those two cylinders versus the one cylinder. Speed wise, check out the speed video I did. Uh, I can clip 18 with this six horsepower on this 12 foot common crawdad. I can clip 18, but cruising speed 16 all day long overall power i am okay value used i am okay tahatsu i'm okay i think mercury is a little bit high reliability i am okay if i can solve the cold starting issue i think this motor is going to be a workhorse for me i think it's going to last me a long time overall i'm very pleased with this setup six horsepower on a 12 foot flat bottom that's my quick rant slash review and my opinion of how this has performed so far this year. So let's hit the water and see how she runs. Let's do it. I left my life jacket in the truck. Okay. All right, we're on the water. Starting procedure, gas vent, fuel valve open, choke, throttle control on start, and we pull and we pull and we pull and we pull until it starts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah! What was that, seven? And now, the rest of the day, it will take one pull. Let's go take it for a ride. Here's our runway. We're about quarter throttle. about eight miles an hour. All right, we're fully planed right now. It's about 14 miles an hour right here. I'm gonna give it full throttle and we're gonna get up to, get up to about 16. All right, there's full throttle. And we're smoking. We just clipped 17. So from a power perspective, the only thing that I really don't like is that 20 seconds it takes to really plane this guy out. It feels like the motor is bogging down until it fully planes. Then it goes. Maybe if I go to a four blade prop, that might help. Uh, comment below, how can I get on plane faster? But let's do that again. I'll show you the back view one more time but we were we were flying the half half throttle right there we're not playing we're not playing and that's full throttle we're still not playing we're still not playing it'll break loose here in a second there it goes now we're playing and she is smoking now I don't want to go much faster than this in this plastic boat. Man, I love this motor. It's just two things, two things. Cold starting and that initial power, the time it takes to get planed out. Man, hope he's okay. I would not 
think twice about killing this motor in the middle of this current pull. I have 100% confidence that it's going to start. All right, we're right above all this junk. So right when I kill this motor, that current's going to suck us right in there. Here we go. Bam. So reliability wise, I'm very, very pleased once that motor's warm. I did another video on fuel efficiency with this thing. It's got a 0.3 gallon gas tank, internal gas tank. With a full tank of gas, this will go slightly over nine miles and miles to the gallon performance is over 30 miles per gallon. So if you've got a gallon gas tank, backup gas tank in the boat, which I do, I know that will get me roughly around 30 miles, which is crazy. I mean, I'm not gonna run 30 miles in this boat in a day. So that's, well, that's good enough for anything that I'm gonna do. You don't need a $50,000 boat to have fun. This costs $1,000 used. This boat I got for free, but you can get a boat like this for $300. I've got a utility trailer. I don't even have a boat trailer, and it works perfect. I have such a good time going out on small rivers and small streams. I'm about 20 miles into this trip, and I haven't had one single issue yet. So, so far. What was that? Oh my gosh, man. I love it. I just one of those things that I love, but there's just a couple of little little things that just just bug me. I don't know. I have fun in this little boat with this little motor. I don't really have to worry about it. I hit a log, I hit a log. As long as it doesn't flip me over. If you have any questions, put them down below. As always, please, if you harvest fish out of small streams, please use common sense and please pick up your trash. Have a good one. Get Thank you.